The Romance of the Rancho. Cahuenga, 1845. Americans' aid and defeat of Mitchell Terena. Chino, 1846. Americans captured by revolting Californians. Los Angeles, 1849. First mayor of Los Angeles elected. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos, a weekly dramatization of the men and events which make up the fascinating history of Southern California. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, returns to the microphone to narrate another exciting chapter in the story of our Southland. For 48 years, Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles has served the citizens of Los Angeles County. During that nearly half a century, the company has searched out, transcribed, and segregated information about every change of ownership of every parcel of land in the entire county, from the original grant down to the present day. Also during that time, the company has built up an organization of trained title experts who keep the voluminous files up to date by making hundreds of new entries every day and who use these records to examine titles and issue policies of title insurance. The net result of all this activity through the years is the Title Insurance and Trust Company, which issues more policies of title insurance than any other company in the world, is able to provide this service promptly and accurately, and to do so at rates well below the average cost of similar protection elsewhere in the United States. Now, here is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, to tell us the story. Buenas noches, senoras y senores. Tonight, we present the second half of a life story of the great American pioneer of California, Benjamin David Wilson, whom the Californians called Don Benito, and who was closely connected with the history of Pasadena, Alhambra, and the surrounding area, as well as Riverside, Westwood Hills, and Los Angeles. For those of you who missed the story, interrupted last week, and the rebroadcast arranged for last Sunday, we traced the adventurous Wilson life as an Indian trader in New Mexico, his coming to California, and his ultimate decision to stay here after he was elected alcalde of the Mexican Pueblo of Los Angeles. Tonight we are to hear of the large part he played in the momentous events of 1845 to 1849, which left California a part of the United States. Here is another vivid adventure in the romance of the ranchos. Early in the year 1845, Don Benito Wilson was living at his rancho Furupa, near the present site of Riverside. He was acting as alcalde of the district, and it was in this capacity that he received an order from high-ranking citizens. I directed to summon every man in your district capable of bearing arms. Bring them to Los Angeles and pick up any others you may find along the way. We need every man to help us stop the rabble of... Mitchell Terena. Mitchell Terena, the name spelt villainy to all respectable citizens of the Southland. For Mitchell Terena was the governor of California who had brought with him from Mexico a ragged army, most of which had been recruited from the jails of Mexico City. For months, they had made themselves obnoxious to the citizens of California, and now revolt had flared up. Wilson learned the particulars on his arrival with a band of volunteers in Los Angeles. Well, the town is certainly in an uproar. But why not? With Mitchell Terena's army at the very gates of the city. They're camped at Encino in San Fernando Valley, not one day's march. Why hasn't Castro stopped them before? Oh, they've tried, but Mitchell Terena has too many men. Castro had a retreat before him, hoping to pick up enough men here. If he can't stop them here, he'll have to fall back to San Diego. Hey, don't worry, we'll stop them here. The whole town's behind Castro. Of course. Department Assembly's meeting right now to proclaim a new governor, Don Pio Pico. Good, and we'll make it stick, too. <laughs> Just imagine me, Bill, taking part in an organized revolution against constituted authority. I never would have believed it. I know, Ben, but this time every respectable citizen is on that side. 
With your 20 men, we have almost 50 American volunteers. Ben, Ben Wilson. Oh, well, say, this is John Rowland. Here, John. Oh, I'm glad you're here, Ben. Your provisions and ammunition are ready, so you'd better get your men outfitted right away, tonight. Because we're going to march out to meet Mitchell Terrena. We leave early tomorrow morning. That means we'll probably go to battle about noon. Yes, by this time tomorrow night, it'll be decided one way or the other. If we lose, God help Los Angeles. <laughs> Out through Cahuenga Pass marched the Army of the Californians, headed by General Jose Castro, Andres Pico, and the newly proclaimed Governor Pio Pico. By noon, they sighted the forces of Michel Terrena coming down the valley. On the banks of the Los Angeles River, the two armies deployed and set up their artillery. In a moment, the battle was on, a battle momentous in giving the Californians greater freedom of government from Mexico. One of the reasons, perhaps, that there were no casualties was due to an action of the Americans among the outnumbered followers of Castro's army. As the artillery duel got underway, Don Benito Wilson and William Workman, who commanded the Americans, received word... See, si, senores, the Americanos on the other side are commanded by Captain Brandt and Major Brandt. Why, Bill, I know those men. Yes, yeah, so do I. They're good men. Of course. I can't imagine they're being mixed up with Mitchell Terrena and his cutthroats. Well, they probably don't understand the real situation. They've been fed a lot of false stories. If only we could speak with them. I know men like that would see reason. Yes, I think they would see. I have an idea. Now, here, give me that powder sack. What are you doing, Ben? Here, hold this long stick, will you? Now, you'll see in just a minute. I'm going to tie this bag onto this stick. I yeah? see. It's a white flag. Right. Sergeant, uh, where did you say the other Americanos were? They're at the head of this ravine, some 500 yards away. You intend to go to them under this white flag? Oh, yeah, huh? why not? Now, if I can just talk to Brent... But well, it's dangerous. They might fire on you. Now, Bill, after some of the adventures we've had, you think they're going to scare me? Besides, they won't fire on a white flag. Come on, now, get busy. Now, who do you want to send with me? Well, uh, James McKinley will go, and you'd better take a scout to send back for help if you need Never it. Never mind the scout. McKinley and I manage, and we'll see to it those Americans will not fire a shot for Mitchell Terrena. there. Now, keep under cover. Yeah. I don't want them to spot our movements until they can see the white flag. All right. Here. Give me your hand. This is rough going. Yeah. Here you are. Let me carry the flag for a while. Yeah. Oh, right down. They fired on us. Yeah, they had their cannon loaded with a grape shot. Are you all right? Sure. Fine. Is this far enough? Yes, I think so. We'll let them come out to us here. All right. Raise the flag. All right. There. You think they can see that? Yeah, a little bit higher. Yeah. Clear the bushes there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, all we can do is just wait for him to come up. They're almost here. Four of them. And that's Brent leading them. Good. Now, he's a man I can talk to. You don't think they'd trick us? Under the white flag? No, James. They are men of honor. Even though they do fight for Mitchell Terrena. I hope you're right. Uh, we'll know in a minute. Here they are. Hello! Step out and identify yourself. Well, hello, Captain Brand. It's Benjamin Wilson. Wilson? Well, I had no idea I'd find you here. Well, it is a strange place to meet, Captain, but I am glad it is you. For I know that you're a man of reason. And I can ask you simply, why do you fight for such a man as Mitchell Terrena? Well, I might ask the same of you. Why do you fight for Pico and against the legally appointed governor? Because that is the side of right. This rabble of Mitchell Terrena is are unfriendly to any decent, respectable humanity, and to Americans in particular. If they hold their own in this country, they'll be a constant menace to our security. Well, that may be true, but would your Governor Pico be less hostile to Americans? Now, these people whose cause we support have always treated us kindly. They're our friends. We have no reason to expect anything but fair and friendly dealing from them. Yeah, we've heard a different story in the North. But I shouldn't put it past Mitchell Terrena to falsify in his favor. Now, Ben, let's put our cards on the table. Why, of course. Now, please do. The young men I command are fearful of what may happen. Many of them have been promised land by Mitchell Terrena. Many, in fact, have received deeds from the governor. They wish to protect them. Well, of course. That's only natural. But how, then, would Pico regard their lands? Or the chances of their getting any? Well, I've talked to Pico myself about this, and he said that it could easily be arranged. Yes, but... And furthermore, I can reach Don Pio now and have him join us here in just a few minutes. You wish to see him? Well, that'd be perfect. Will you send for him, Wilson? Right away. And so, you see, 
please your excellency, these men want assurances that their deeds to the land will be respected. Gentlemen, are any of you citizens of Mexico? No, we're not. And the title deeds which Mitchell Trainer gave you are not worthy paper they are written on. And he knew it well when he gave them to you. That's right, gentlemen, according to the laws of Mexico. But if you will abandon the Mitchell Trainer cause, I will protect you in your quiet and peaceful possession of the land you now have. If you will take the steps necessary to become citizens of Mexico, I will issue you the proper titles. Well, but suppose we do not wish to become citizens of Mexico. Then I cannot give you an invulnerable title. I will not disturb your peaceful possession as long as I may be governor. I promise you that. But I should advise citizenship. There is no need to hurry. But as long as this is a province of Mexico, that is your only chance for a completely safe title to the land. I can do no more. For I, too, must obey the law. Don Pio, by that statement, you have shown yourself to be a more honorable man than Mitchell Torreina. I, for one, would rather trust the fate of my land to you, whom I know to be an honorable man. I feel sure that my men will agree. Therefore, we shall accept your promise, Your Excellency. Uh, Brent, that's fine. Muchas gracias, senores. I am sure you will have no cause to regret it. And now, you will quit the fight? Quit the fight, yes. But since we're in a position of having marched down with Mitchell Torreina, I'd rather we were not asked to fight on the other side. Of course, senores. You shall not be asked. Well, then you can be assured we'll not fire a shot. Good, and you can be assured, gentlemen, that Mitchell Torreina is serving his last day as governor of California. <laughs> The insecurity and uncertainty of titles to land prior to the American occupation of California is clearly illustrated in the episode you have just heard in tonight's story. Notwithstanding the grants which had been made to Americans by Mitchell Terena, doubt existed, as Don Pio Pico pointed out, whether the deeds conveyed any title unless the grantees were Mexican citizens. Such doubts as to ownership were to continue until later dispelled by the United States Land Commission. Today... Uncertainty as to land ownership is eliminated by the modern system of title insurance. Protection against effective titles due to such causes as invalid grants, forgeries, deeds, or other instruments executed by minors or incompetents, undisclosed heirs, and many other matters is provided by this insurance. When you buy real estate or accept it as security for loans, follow the example of banks, building and loan companies, and other financial institutions, and insist on this protection. Benjamin D. Wilson's coup in persuading the Americans to desert Mitchell Terena's forces was largely responsible for saving bloodshed at the Battle of Cahuenga and for Mitchell Terena's surrender the next day. Once again, California was peaceful and Wilson retired to his ranch life. But it was not to be for long. For in 1846, workmen and Don Felipe Lugo came with the news. It's war, Don Benito. The United States is at war with Mexico. The Americanos will soon try to occupy California, and no one knows what it will mean. And so, Don Benito, the governor has asked me to pay his respects to you and to submit this communication. As you are on county of this district, he requests your active cooperation in raising forces to repel the invading army of Americanos. Don Felipe, I hardly know what to say. You must realize that this puts me in an impossible position. It means simply that you must make a choice, senor. But that choice is not easy to make. I've received nothing but kindness and consideration from you, my friend. Now, in a way, I believe I am almost a Californiano. Even when your country is seeking to take what is not theirs by ruthless conquests? Even if that were so. Senor, I cannot understand how you, whom I thought to be a fine, generous man... Don Felipe, you must have seen this coming. You must realize that if it were not my country, some other country would annex California... For years, the governing of California has been wretched. Mexico has left us to shift for ourselves as best we could. And a great province as potentially valuable as this cannot be thrown away by any nation without another nation seeking to take it over and promote its resources. And I, for one, believe that the Americano government may be the best answer for California. So, that is how you feel. See. And I dare say there are many of you Californianos who feel the same way. Perhaps they do not matter. For we are determined to resist, senor. 
This is our home, too, and we will defend our lands to the last drop of blood. Oh, now that is foolish, Lugo. The Americanos do not want to take away your lands. I'm sure that all of you would be just as prosperous and happy as before. Ha! I am not so sure, senor. But there is no use arguing. All I require is your answer to the governor. I think you have made it plain what the answer will be. Tell Governor Pico that I respectfully decline his request. Since I am not a citizen of Mexico, nor a military man. Senor, I cannot say what the governor's answer will be, to this will be. But I do not believe a person hostile to our country shall be allowed to remain at large. You uh, would arrest me, Lugo? Well, perhaps I deserve that. However, please remember, I am not hostile to your country. And this has been a very difficult decision to make. Now that I have made it, I am prepared to defend my position. How do you mean? If he will allow me to remain quietly here in my rancho, I pledge that I will take no action hostile to the country. But if he should attempt my arrest, you may be sure that uh, I'll put up a fight. Don Benito's pledge was good enough for Governor Pico, and he was not molested. He stayed on his ranch. And waited. Then, word came that Commodore Stockton's squadron arrived in San Pedro Bay, and with it came a private note from the governor requesting Wilson to call upon him. Shadows hung heavy over Los Angeles as Don Benito rode into the town. Stockton was at San Pedro. General Castro was believed to be preparing to do battle and prevent his entering Los Angeles. But as Don Benito was ushered into the governor's presence, he found a different vision of affairs. And oh, me, amigo. My time here as governor is very short. But Castro is preparing to fight. I hold no stock in Castro's assertions that he will attempt to repel Stockton's advance. No, Don Benito, I'm leaving tomorrow. Leaving? But where are you going? To Mexico. It will probably do no good, but I feel that as long as I am governor, I must do my duty. So I shall go to Mexico, try to get help for us, to fight with. You might be better off if you just stayed here and surrendered. Now, if you go to Mexico, they may not let you come back. <laughs> that would be tragedy, see. But that is a chance I must take. See, I admire your courage and devotion, don't you? Oh, me? enough of this. I called you here, mi amigo, because I have not much time left. You've always been my friend. You are married to the daughter of one of my best friends. So, what can I do for you? Do for me? See. Si. Uh, is there no land you want, no rancho? Uh, tell me now, while I still have the power to grant Oh, it. but don't you. I'm not a citizen of Mexico. Oh, I can't... I, I had forgotten. Everyone thinks you are, whether you are or not. But, uh, well then, isn't there anything I can do for you? No. Except take the best care of yourself and return to us as soon as you can. I will, mi amigo. And... You will do something for me. See, no. Anything in my power, Your Excellency. Go tomorrow to Stockton. Give him my best wishes. Tell him of my intention to leave the country. Express my prayer that he will not ill treat my people. I will do so, Your Excellency. Very well, then, mi amigo. Hasta la vista. May we meet again in peace and happiness. <laughs> from Governor Pico? Yes, Commodore Stockton. The way is clear for your entrance into Los Angeles. Very well. I shall ride with you, Mr. Wilson. My Marines can follow at their own time. And may the future course of events be as smooth and peaceful as this. Commodore, a week has passed and it's all quiet. I've done all I can for you. I'm going back to my rancho, Hurupa. Good, Don Benito. But uh, before you go, please accept this commission from me. I appoint you a captain in the forces of the United States. Now, oh, the Commodore, I'm not a military man. I can't accept. The nonsense. I need someone on the frontier. I can't be sure that Castro's really gone to Mexico. You can gather a squad of men and watch the frontier near your rancho. Oh, Commodore, I can't take up arms against my friends. There's no need for that. Just keep watch. Wilson, I need you. For I have no one else I can trust. 
Hey, very well, Commodore. I will accept it. For a time, life was quiet in Los Angeles, and Commodore Stockton left the city in the hands of young Lieutenant Gillespie and a small force. But soon the inexperienced young officer's actions had caused great resentment in the city, and one day in September 1846, as Don Benito returned from a hunting trip, word came, It's a general revolt. The Californians have started a revolt. Gillespie's small force is besieged in Los Angeles, and the Californians intend to drive out all Americans. They'll be after us too, Ben. We'll have to prepare for it. But we have very little ammunition. We'll have to get to Los Angeles to Gillespie. What do you mean, run from them? Or we can handle a hundred Californians of what we have here. All we have to do is stand up to them, they'll run. All right, men. Uh, gentlemen, it would be a mistake to underrate the courage or the fighting ability of the Californians. It wouldn't be that we've overrated your courage, would it, Wilson? I have never lacked courage, my friend. But I try to use good judgment, too. Well, I say we can stand off any crowd of them fellas they send. I say we ought to meet them face to face. All right, all right. If that's your decision, it's all right with me. But we're making a mistake. Look, look, there they are, riding up across the plains. Holy smokes, there's a lot of them. Yes, my friend, and they have plenty of ammunition. This is our last chance to make a run for it. Oh, no. We ain't afraid of them. Let them come. All right. All right, you're asking for it. Come on, men, into the range house. We'll make our stand there. Come on. All right, now, men, get your guns ready. They're about to charge. Don't waste any shot. Hold your fire until you can do the most good. Ready. Here they come. Look, they shot something out of the roof. It's on fire. It's the roof on fire. Lord, no, we won't. We can fall back on the patio. If they're going to smoke us out, men, we might as well give it up right now. <laughs> You're right, Jeff. That just was our tender. We'd better surrender right now. Now, maybe you gentlemen will revise your ideas about Californians' fighting abilities. Wilson's party surrendered. Weeks went by as the men languished in prison. Some of the Californians visited them, brought them food and clothing and comfort, but they received no hope of release until word came that Stockton was marching up from San Diego, reinforced by the army of General Kearney, and that Colonel Fremont was closing in from the north. And on the 6th of January, 1847, their cell door was open. Senores. Don Andres Tito. Si, sí, Don Benito, mi amigo. Well, what brings you here, General? What's going on? Well, our troops march tomorrow to meet Commodore Stockton and General Carney, who are near Santa Ana and coming here. So, you're going to fight them? Si, sí, mi amigo. I'm sorry. I hope that you'll be all right. I hope so, mi amigo. But now it's for you and your men. We have no one left to guard you. And so for your own protection from the rabble here in Los Angeles... I'm going to ask for your parole. You mean, you're going to let us go? See, si. if you will agree not to join the fight. You have my word, Don Andres. Very well. It is especially important for you and Senor Roland, who are well known as Americano leaders, to get away. So I have two of my best horses outside for you. Make haste and get out of Los Angeles. The others can disperse more easily. Gracias, my friend. I hope that... I hope that all this is finally settled. For your benefit as well as ours. I hope so, mi amigo. And now, adios. No. Hasta la vista. We shall meet again soon under happier conditions. On the horse belonging to Don Andres Pico, Don Benito Wilson sped to safety and to his family. Then, on January 8th, he rode out to a hill overlooking the River San Gabriel and watched his countrymen defeat the Californians in the Battle of San Gabriel. With that battle... The fate of California was sealed. Resistance was broken, and within a few days, word came to Los Angeles of Andres Pico's capitulation to Colonel Fremont at Cahuenga. Now, at last, the war was over for California, but the status of the Californians was still undecided. So, a few days later, when Don Benito Wilson heard that Andres Pico was seen in Los Angeles, he rushed to find his old friend. Don Andres! Don Andres. Mi amigo Don Benito, <laughs> buenos dias. Ah, it's good to see you. I can't <laughs> tell you how happy I am that all is well. Well, but it's all well, senor. I'm living in expectation of arrest at any minute. It is horrible. Well, have you not seen Commodore Stockton yet? No, 
for I fear he should arrest me for breaking parole. Nonsense, mi amigo. Come, come with me. And we shall see him right away. So, General Pico, I have come, Commodore Stockton, to throw myself on your mercy. Well, you realize, of course, that you violated your parole. Uh, also, you surrendered your men to a subordinate officer instead of to the commander-in-chief. Now, you're a military man, General. You should know better. I'm sorry, Commodore. I did not realize that I was committing a breach of military. Well, never mind, General. My quarrel is rightly with Fremont and not with you. It is not my wish to show any ill feeling toward anyone. And certainly not toward you native Californians. Gracias. You are kind. If you come in good faith to surrender yourself and your men, I assure you that there will be no punishment for past acts. All of us, Californians and Americans, must live here together, General, as common citizens of a great country. It is my hope that we shall live happily and prosperously together. With your help, we will do it. Commodore, you may depend upon my help and the help of my people. This is indeed a happy ending. And so the American conquest was completed. Once again, Don Benito Wilson returned to his beloved Lake Vineyard Ranch at San Marino. But such a public-spirited citizen could not remain long out of the limelight. He was called to take active part in the first state convention, to serve as county clerk, and as Indian agent for the United States government. But the citizens of Los Angeles, both American and Californian, united in honoring him as their first citizen. For when the city was first incorporated... The results of the first election. Oh, it is me, amigo Don Benito Wilson. He is the first mayor of Los Angeles. A fitting triumph for an adventurous and worthwhile career. Don Benito Wilson, the little Tennessee boy who came west to fight the Indians and build a new land, was the first mayor of what was to become one of the world's great cities. Such is the romance of the ranchers. In just a moment, Frank Graham will tell you about the story he has planned for next week, which will be on Christmas Eve. Benjamin D. Wilson, Don Benito, earned the love and respect of his contemporaries and his high place in the memories of Southern Californians of today by his energy, ability, and character. He was one of many such men to whom we all are forever indebted for the development of our Southland into the wonderful place to live that it is today. Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles as one of the beneficiaries of this great heritage, feels it a privilege to bring to its listeners the inspiration of these true stories in all their original drama, excitement, and color. And now watch the story for next week, Frank. Next week, Romance of the Ranchers comes to you on Christmas Eve. And we've planned to bring you a recreation of an early Christmas in connection with the Mission San Gabriel, the founding of which will also be dramatized. Be with us, won't you? And so until then, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Hasta la vista, señoras y señores. The Romance of the Ranchos, a presentation of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero, is dramatized by John Dunkel and produced by Ted Bliss, with special music arranged by Irwin Yo. Bob Lamont speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.